Hello and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. We're going to continue, or actually we're going to, we're going to continue our Bible study that we always do on this channel. But we're going to start a new book, the book of Hosea. Okay? And Hosea is also uh, one of those books and one of those prophets that goes along with the uh, prophetic ministry series that we've started here on the Feed My Sheep Foundation uh, video channel ministry. So, uh, Jose also receives different messages from the Heavenly Father in reference to the behavior of the kingdom, and then he is led to live it out in his life. And we're going to see how that actually takes place here in the first chapter. We get an opportunity to see it happening and unfolding before our very, very eyes. And again, um, he, Jose, is also a part of the prophetic ministry series, the group of prophets, uh, which did include Jeremiah, Isaiah, and then today, Jose, and then also Ezekiel will be the last book. And these are prophets from the Old Testament that God spoke to and began to send them uh, to the children of Israel to either forewarn them with uh, showing them their behavior through by their own life presentation or either uh, some way of illustrating through the prophet uh, the judgment that he's getting ready to go forward with upon them. So we're going to see something similar to that today in this first chapter. It begins with the word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, uh, Jotham, and Ahaz, and Hezekiah. The kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, he was king of Israel. At the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, uh, the Lord said to him, Go take unto you a wife of whoredoms, okay, and children of whoredoms, for the land has committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So see how he is this prophet, and God tells him to go marry this particular woman. And she's going to be a representation of uh, how he feels and how he sees the children of Israel, okay? He sees them as being whoredom. You know, they're walking in uh, adultery. They backslid. They're rebellious, and he's referring to them as a whore. So he tells the prophet to go and marry a whore and also uh, get whore, whoredom children. And he says, then Jose says, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Gibbelim, which conceived and she bare him a son. Okay, so he went and got this woman, Gomar. So she was the one uh, that had the, that was the whore um, that he chose. And then the Lord said unto him, call the name of the son. Okay, that she began to give birth, she gave birth to him a son. Call the name of that son Jezreel. Okay, for yet a little while and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel, okay? And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there and just speak from these few verses that we just went over. Because you see that um, even though he's speaking directly to Jose, telling him what to do today, in this, as in the, under the new covenant, okay, as we are a part of the kingdom of God, and even though we're seeing a revelation from an Old Testament book, we're seeing how God actually spoke directly to individuals. Well, today, once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and those that He's already predestined to be a part of His kingdom, He will use in this particular format, okay. Now, the only way to be able to discern it is if the individual is uh, operating, of course, in the will of God, walking in the spirit, and has discernment to see that, okay? And then I'll take you back to the incident that we spoke of uh, once again with the Will Smith, Jada Pickett, and the um, Chris Rock incidents. Now, all of them, without a doubt, like I said, I know they're a part of the kingdom. I have never even met them, touched them, or anything, but just in the fact that God used them the way that they he used them, and they didn't know that they were being used like that, without a doubt. They didn't know that, okay? But nevertheless, God was using them to show that he was to forewarn that he was getting ready to go forward with his judgment because of the mistreatment of his wife, 
which is the church, okay? And so that was the sign that was given in that particular format for us to see, again, those in the kingdom to let, you know, to assure us of his vengeance because uh, us being a part of the kingdom, being mistreated in the earth, the heavenly father is not well pleased with that, okay? He's a vindicator of those things that happen. Jesus Christ said it also. It would be better for a person to just hang them on self, okay, for uh, the mistreatment of his kingdom. So, uh, again, from the New Testament point of view, that individual would not be able, that it wouldn't talk, di that individual would not talk directly with God to get the instructions as did Jose did in, the, in that time of the Old Testament where God actually spoke to them. Whereas today, now it may happen, okay, it can happen, but it's more than likely he's just going to use them because once we... Uh, accept Jesus Christ and we accept his heart, we accept his mind, we become his vessel that he uses, however he chooses to use it, for the representation of his kingdom in the earth, okay? So then going on here with, uh, and another thing I want to point out here, okay, so in verse 4, where he says, and the Lord said unto him, call his name Jezreel, okay, so Jezreel was a place of, uh, it was a good place, it was a good place of healing because uh, and Naboth was also, uh, he was a Jezreelite. He was in that particular place, okay? And Naboth was the individual that uh, Jesse Bell and her husband took the vineyard from, okay? So as we read, continue, and this is a very small chapter, as we read to the end of it, we're just going to see where God is saying he's going to avenge all that happened and took place in Jezreel because Naboth's vineyard was taken. That's where Jezebel killed the prophets. Uh, she was um, also doing uh, other mean, evil things to the children of Israel. So he's saying he was going to avenge th that particular place, okay? And so then verse 6 says, and she conceived again. Now this is the wife. She conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name uh, Lo Ruhemah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Okay, so this is in representation to the daughter and Israel's rebellion, okay, and how God is going to have no mercy upon them, but he is, as he stated, I will utterly take them away. So again, each one of his children, and even the wife, we can see, are being used, okay, to explain the heart of God in the earth toward his kingdom. His kingdom at that time, the children of Israel. His kingdom today, the saints of God in the earth. And so he said, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and I and will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle by horses nor by horsemen. And now when she had weaned uh, the child who was Laru Hama, she conceived and bare a son. Okay, so after giving birth to uh, the daughter, now she's giving birth to a son. Okay, and he said, now, and then said, God, call his name Loami, for you are not my people and I will not be your God. Okay, and that's how God began to feel in reference to the children of Israel at, after such a long time of dealing with them and uh, their rebellion and then them being forewarned many days in reference to that rebellion that God was going to go forward with, again, his chastisement, okay? And they didn't. So therefore, that's his heart right there. And again, it explains with the name of the child how he feels toward his people. And he says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Okay. Now here again, verses 10 and 11, and I've said this on this channel very, time, very many times. That at times you can be reading a chapter in a book, and that's what we're doing, and get like three different messages from one chapter. And that's what we're getting in this book, in this chapter right here, too, because he speaks on what happened in Jezreel, and then he at, continues to speak of the children of Israel also and their behavior. 
And then he goes in to speak, you know, uh, basically uh, redemption and recovery. Okay, because that's what he's going to speak of in these two chapters. As he says, that, though I was angry and I dismissed you, I disowned you, yet will I come back and I will have mercy and then I will claim you again. Okay, just as if we look in the Old Testament and we see all the things that the children of Israel went through because of their behavior and because of rebellion. Well, in the New Testament, we see God come back with a lovable heart and uh, release salvation into the earth. Okay, because, hey, he's God Almighty. So then, 11, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Okay, and Jezreel, if you would like to go into... Uh, that reading in reference to that city and all that God spoke of. Let's go over to 2 Kings chapter 10. So 2 Kings chapter 10. And actually, I'm going to just read verses 1 through well 11 and this goes in reference to what uh, the Lord said to Jose when he says call his name Jezreel when he had the uh, child and told him to name him the son Jezreel for yet a little while now I'll avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and cause it to seize and the kingdom of the house of Israel okay and so that is what happened and took place in chapter 10 of 2 Kings. It speaks more in depth of that particular moment in time. And actually, you can go into reading that whole chapter. But verse 10 is really 10 and 11. I'll start at 8. Okay, so 2 Kings chapter 10, I'm starting at verse 8. There came a messenger and told him, saying, They have bought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering end of the gate until the morning. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, You be righteous, for behold, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who slew all these? Now, uh, he says, uh, Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord hath done that which he spoke by his servant Elijah. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab, okay? So after Ahab, because we know of the prophecy um, that God told Ahab what would happen to Jezebel. Oh, I'm sorry, not, he didn't tell Ahab. He told um, all, Nath all that was in surrounding, I should say, of the children of Israel, what was going to take place with Ahab, okay? In reference to his wife Jezebel and all they had killed the prophets and all of that. Well, after, um, not Ahab, Lord have mercy, Jesus, Jezebel, <laughs> Jezebel's husband, Jehu, or, okay, yeah, Ahab, okay, because I'm getting the names, don't let me get them confused here, Ahab and Jezebel, okay, Jehu and Jezebel, Ahab and Jezebel was married, okay, Jehu, Okay, after Jehu went through the land, as the Lord said that he would, he went through the land and he killed the, the, prophets, uh, of Je the prophets of Baal, which belonged to the uh, Jezebel worshiping crew people because they worshiped Baal. And um, as the Lord said he would do, he was going to kill the prophets of, you know, that were part of Baal because of Jezebel killing some of the prophets of the Lord. Okay, so therefore Jehu went back and he killed the prophets of Baal, and also there were still people left there. So in verse 11, we see what God said over here in verse 4 to Hosea, come to life, come to life, okay, comes alive, rather. So verse 11, it says, so Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, okay, and all his great men and his kinfolks and his priests until he left him none remaining, okay, so, after Jehu 
went in and killed all as God told him to do in reference to Jezebel. Then he went and slew all that remained in Jezreel, okay, which identifies with this chapter in Hosea the chapter 1 and then verse 4, what thus said the Lord would take place in Jezreel, okay? All right, so that explains that, all right? And that is the end of this chapter. It's a very small chapter. And as we continue to go forward in its reading, we're going to see more of God explaining to us or revealing to us how he uses the prophetic ministry in the earth, okay? In representation to expressing how he feels about his kingdom, okay? Uh, whenever at all times there is a rebellion or whenever there's been a petition, a reigning of petitioning to heaven in reference to it, any specific thing, okay? Because no doubt, all that was taking place with Jezebel, there were many children of Israel petitioning God in reference to it because she was killing the prophets, okay? So therefore, as the prayers and petitions went up to heaven, the Heavenly Father then released a prophet, a prophecy in reference to them being, unfortunately, killed. And so it came to pass. And we just read about how it did it. All right, so God bless you, God be with you, and I'll see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the prophetic ministry, taking a look at the Old Testament prophets and how God used them prophetically in the kingdom and how he uses that spirit today, uh, the individual that has been birthed into the Holy Spirit, how he uses uh, the prophetic ministry in the earth today through the kingdom, through each saint, whatever he chooses to use them, okay? God bless you. God be with you. And I'll see you in our next video.